Hey there, everyone, and welcome to the Birds Nest Podcast. I'm Joe Donahue. Thank you so much for joining us. The Eagles are off of the bye week, and we have one of the most exciting games coming up on Monday night. The Philadelphia Eagles are traveling to Kansas City to take on the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, call it a rematch of Super Bowl 57, call it the Kelsey Bowl, call it the Taylor Swift Bowl, call it whatever you want. But it's sure to be an electric game and one that most NFL fans have had circled on their calendar since way back in May when the schedule was released. The game is on Monday Night Football. Kickoff is at 8.15 p.m. on your ESPN or ABC channel. ESPN actually has wall-to-wall coverage of this game planned between now and Monday night. So it is going to be a big deal. As we start to enter these final days before we move into this game, here are what I'm going to be looking at as we get ready for this game. So the first key to this game really is going to be finding an answer for Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey by far and away the inferior of the two Kelsey brothers, in my personal, humble, unbiased opinion, has by far and away established himself as the dominant Chiefs receiver. And he's not even a wide receiver, he's a tight end. Kelsey has 57 catches for 597 yards this season, and he also has four touchdowns so far this season. Now, during the Eagles matchup against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, Kelsey had six catches for 81 yards, and he was the leading receiver in terms of yards. And there's a reason why he goes in fantasy early, and it's because of the kind of production that he has and the kind of connection that he has with his quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, who is still arguably the best quarterback in the league. Now, the good news for the Eagles is that while, yes, Travis Kelsey is a huge threat The wide receiver room is not all that impressive. Receiving yards drop precipitously once Kelsey is removed from the equation. The next leading receiver is Rasheed Rice. He's a rookie. He has 32 catches for 378 yards this season, also four touchdowns to his credit. But after him, you have Justin Watson at 14 catches for 276 yards. Marquez Valdez-Scantling at 14 catches for 249 yards. Noah Gray at 18 catches for 214 yards, and Sky Moore at 16 catches for 201 yards. Chiefs reporter Jordan Foote told Eagles reporter Ed Kraz, both of whom from Sports Illustrated this week, that, quote, if the Chiefs end up falling short of their goal this year, the odds on favor to be the culprit is absolutely a lackluster wideout room. Rookie Rashi Rice is solid, and veteran Justin Watson is in the same boat, but Casey's investments elsewhere aren't panning out. That, combined with inconsistent offensive line play and Kelsey taking a small step back, puts the offense somewhat on thin ice. Now, the Eagles should be prepared for all of the Chiefs receivers, because Andy Reid has actually done a decent enough job over the years of keeping us on our toes but they especially need to be prepared for Kelsey. He'll likely be Mahomes' number one target this week. He has been in every game that Kelsey's been activated for. And the Eagles do have an asset in safety Kevin Byard, who has played well against the Chiefs on a more regular basis before coming to Philadelphia. Defensive coordinator Sean Desai was asked about how Byard was able to hold his own against Kelsey. Yeah, you know, I think I think he has a good mindset. I think he understands... Uh, some of Travis's route stems, and at least off the tape, as I'm talking about, you know, uh, uh, and then, you know, he, he challenges them. Uh, and then they, they had some different looks, too, from a schematic standpoint that Tennessee had done that, that helped him uh, win in those situations. Now, it is going to be a challenge. Eagles opponents have targeted tight ends 55 times so far this season and completed 43 of those catches for 438 yards and five touchdowns. Just two teams have allowed more touchdowns to tight ends than the Eagles have so far this season. Additionally, last time the Eagles played, it was against the Cowboys, and C.D. Lamb is the Cowboys' only real weapon in the passing game, and while it would have been expected for the Eagles to be able to take Lamb out, he wasn't. Just fundamentally, he wasn't. K. 
Kelsey cannot be allowed to run rampant like Lamb was, or the Eagles will suffer a worse fate than they did against Dallas. The second key to the game is getting to Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes has been sacked 12 times so far this season for 89 yards, and he's been pressured 127 times, according to PFF. For comparison, Jalen Hurts has been sacked 22 times, and he's been pressured 134 times. Now, the Chiefs quarterback is pretty good at scrambling. He's taken off 27 times so far this season, and he's averaging about 3.01 seconds to throw the football, whereas Eagles opponents are averaging about 2.57 seconds in time to throw this season. Now, some of Eagles opponents getting the ball off a little bit faster is being done to negate the Eagles' dominant pass rush. That's fourth in the league, according to PFF, and it's generated 30 sacks on the season so far. During Super Bowl 57, Patrick Mahomes was sacked a grand total of zero times. There are a lot of people out there that say that Super Bowl 57 is really just Super Bowl 52 without the strip sack at the end of the game. So it's going to be very important for the Eagles to deliver a different result against the Kansas City Chiefs, hopefully getting to Mahomes. Again, going to be a challenge. The Chiefs are a really, really strong team. But the Eagles are going to need to lean on a dominant front four led by Jalen Carter, who is the second-ranked defensive lineman, according to PFF. He has five sacks, 29 pressures, and a forced fumble to his credit, as well as Jordan Davis, who's 21st in the league with four sacks and 12 pressures, to make sure that Mahomes is uncomfortable in the pocket. Now, the pass rush is not going to be enough on its own. As I said, Mahomes does have some legs, but it will make it easier. Now, I'm expecting this to come from the edge rushers mostly. The Chiefs do have a solid inner core on their offensive line in Joe Thune, Creed Humphrey, and Trey Smith, but it does weaken on the edge when you get to guys like Donovan Smith and Jawan Taylor. So I would expect most of the pass rush to come from the edge where the Chiefs' offensive line is a little bit weaker. The third key to the game I have is establishing the run game. The Chiefs right now are 19th in the league in rushing yards per game. They are at 103.8 yards per game on average. The Eagles faced off against a Dallas team that was slightly better in the run game than the Chiefs are, and the Eagles ran for their highest rushing yard total since the Eagles match up against the Rams way back in the beginning of October. Now, something has been off for the Eagles with the run game lately, but as I looked at the Eagles' run game over the last couple of weeks, it felt like the Eagles were taking a page out of Andy Reid's coaching playbook and moving away from the run game if it's not working after a few tries. That's not how the run game works, though. You need to use the run game to wear down the defense, and you have to keep pounding at it to be effective. Now, what should help the run game is the projected return of Cam Jurgens, who, of course, has been spending the last several weeks on injured reserve. The 21-day practice window was opened for him prior to the Cowboys game. Having Cam Jurgens in there at right guard would provide additional stability for an offensive line that is already very dominant in the league, certainly one of the best where they would be able to create the holes that would be needed for the running back to burst through. Jurgen's return is promising. As of the time of this taping, he has been a full participant in practice this week. So we'll see how things pan out, but I would expect him to come back. Also good news, Jalen Hurts, who has been tending to an unspecified knee injury, took the brace off of his knee this week during practice. These developments, both Jurgens and Hertz, are huge, and they should herald a return to the run game as normal against the Chiefs team that, to put it very frankly, can be run on. The fourth key to this game is the Eagles' outside receivers. Dallas Goddard is out with a fractured forearm that he sustained against the Cowboys, and this is a huge loss for the Eagles. He's the Eagles' number three receiver in terms of both catches and receiving yards, 38 for 410 yards with two touchdowns. Last season, the Eagles were without Goddard for a few games, and it took a bit before the Eagles were able to bounce back from that. Nick Sirianni was asked about that earlier this week. Yeah, anytime you lose a player to his to Dallas Goddard's um, capabilities, you're gonna you're gonna you have to compensate, and you have to you know again, like I said, it's never just one guy's uh, responsibility to 
take all the, the brunt of, of that work. Um, it's, it'll be by committee. Um, you know, we just don't have a, another guy like Dallas Goddard sitting around, right? You know, we'll miss him, no doubt. Um, have a lot of faith in the guys that have to step up in his absence. Um, and you're right, last year in the, in the Colts game, well, you know, we didn't – I wouldn't say – you know, there's different reasons why you're not successful. Not, and one of them is not having, having Dallas on, on, the, on the field. Um, but, you know, we learned how to play without him and, and continued to improve and made us just better when he got back. Nick Sirianni was also asked about Goddard's ability to come back later this season, and he did indicate there's a reason why Goddard is not yet on injured reserve. Yeah, you know, we, we, have, we have high hopes um, that, um, you know, that Dallas is, is, is going to be back. Um, you know, again, I don't know when. I, I think that's unfair to Dallas, but, yeah, there's a reason he's not on IR yet. Now, Goddard's absence should force the Eagles to rely on more 11 personnel formations. For those of you who don't know what an 11 personnel formation is, that would be one running back and one tight end. So it's one and one, 11. Uh, compared to a 12 personnel formation, which is one running back and two tight ends. The 11 personnel formation will give the Eagles more of an opportunity to rely on A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith in the pass game. Now, the Chiefs may have their hands full with Brown, who earlier this season had a six-game streak of 125-plus receiving yard games. That's the longest such streak in league history. But in Super Bowl 57, the Chiefs were actually able to keep a very firm grip on both Brown and Smith. Smith had seven catches for 100 yards. Brown had six catches for 96 yards and a touchdown. So the Eagles need to capitalize on this team and make sure that they're exploiting weaknesses. With high-powered offenses, ultimately it's going to come down to the better defense. And when I say better defense, I am specifically referring to the defense that's able to shore up gaps and be able to make sure that opposing offenses can't take advantage of them. I think that the Eagles defense is able to do that in a better way than the Kansas City Chiefs is. I am really, really impressed with how Sean Desai is making mid-game adjustments. So it's really up to A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith and the other receivers to be able to really take advantage of a Chiefs secondary and the weaknesses that might be present. The last key to this game is going to be for the Eagles to get out of their own heads. Now look, we all know what happened during Super Bowl 57. Jalen Hurts took responsibility for the game in the postgame due to the fumble that he had in the second quarter. James Bradbury's end-of-game holding call is still seared in Eagles' minds, even though Bradbury himself admitted that it was a hold. These are painful memories of the Super Bowl that are going to live with Eagles fans, and for those players that were a part of the team... They'll probably live on and have rent-free headspace in Eagles players' minds for a long time. During training camp, Jalen Hurts was asked about a lock screen background of him walking off with the confetti in the background. He declined to answer the question. Yeah, I'd rather not uh, talk about that. I don't think it's really appropriate considering if it were up to me, I wouldn't know about it. No one would know about it, so um, I'll leave it at that. Jordan Mailata said this week that the game is personal for him. He was blocked from the Lombardi Trophy by the team that he's going to face off against this week. Lots of players, I'm sure, have similar stories. But Coach Sirianni addressed that it was still important for players to be locked in for this game as a regular season game this week. You know, any week, you can turn any week in the NFL into, I'm going to get up for this one right here. Like, it, your, our job is to make sure it's it's – mentally challenging and you have to be mentally tough to get up for the every game the same every single every single week and uh we try to pride ourselves on being mentally tough and i know and and i i hear jordan i hear what he says said on um as far as that's personal and and you know what the, the important thing is if you you look for any ways to to find motivation but you all but it is important that each and every week you're locked in and have that mental toughness to go to work the same, you know, whether you're playing Team A or the team that beat you in the Super Bowl last year, you, you got to have that mental toughness to go about your business that way. But if the motivation for, uh, for Jordan um, is helping him 
and he's not distracted by it, by all means use it. If, if the motivation is distracting to you, then don't use it. So, and, I, and so for some guys, it's going to be, uh, we're going to pr- treat every week the same and, and get ready just the same, just like I said last week going into the Cowboys game. Um, but if you, if you can use that for extra motivation, then go ahead. If, if it's distraction, you know, then leave it aside. So possibly the biggest trap for the Eagles to fall into this game is to let this game become more than just a regular season game, at least for the players on the field. The fans, the sports media, whatever, need to, to a certain extent, allow that to become a huge thing. It's one of the reasons why this game has garnered so much attention and is one of the reasons why ESPN is providing wall-to-wall coverage. But for the players, they just need to be able to take this game as it is and not let the revenge part of it become all-consuming, but allow the revenge part of it, if they can, to be able to fuel their own performance and to make their own performance in this game better. Now, I do have faith that Coach Sirianni will keep the players or do his best to keep the players from falling into that trap, but it's a trap that even he himself admitted might be a little bit difficult to avoid. There's going to be things that, you're, that you'll say, oh, man, that was a really good play, or, oh, man, that we wish we could have that one back. Uh, you know, do you find yourself at sometimes doing that? Yeah, but you got to remind yourself that, hey, this is our job is to get prepared for this game. What happened in the past happened in the past, and we'll learn from our mistakes. Um, we'll get better from the things that we did well. Um, but, yeah, I mean, well, I'd be lying to say if, if I would be like, oh, if, it just, if this would have just happened or that would have just happened every once in a while. It's not, but we're not dwelling on it. So if the team's able to leave the revenge element of this, for the most part, to the fans, the sports media, the people who are going to be watching the game, and just go out there and play a good game, it'll be a fun game to watch. So those are my keys to this game, but let me know what you think in the comments below. What are you getting excited about when it comes to this Kansas City Chiefs-Eagles matchup? What has you concerned? Let me know. And thank you so much to everybody for tuning in to the Bird's Nest podcast. You can support the Bird's Nest podcast by liking and subscribing to Bird's Nest Media right here on YouTube and by sharing to your social media pages. You can also find us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Amazon Podcasts, and Spotify. Please visit birdsnestmedia.com for additional Eagles coverage. And if you feel so inclined to support us in a different way, you can find the link to our Patreon in the description below and at birdsnestmedia.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. And let's go Eagles!